Okay, can we talk about <laughs> your uh, maintenance skills? Hey, my maintenance skills are great! What are you talking about? What do you mean maintenance skills? Okay, so I'm working on a project. I'm sitting at the couch just kind of going on at my own little business and I, you start fumbling around doing a bunch of stuff and I hear all these noises behind me. I like and, to putter. And then like, I don't know, maybe an hour or so later you're like, hey, will you come check this out? And you went to go do all the sealant in the kitchen. I did. And you made like these giant globs trying to do the sealant because you decided in that moment that you, it was your time to get the project done. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> so, to answer your question, I have improved. Oh, yeah? I, I'd like to see the proof of that. But I still apply caulking and sealant like a two-year-old. I just, it, it's just like a better two-year-old. <laughs> it's really bad. Welcome to the Wandering RV Podcast, your source for our stories, our screw-ups, and our successes living the full-time RV life. I'm your host, Kara, the Wandering RV Babe, and this is my driver, Ryan. It's a good day to be an RVer. It is a good day to be an RVer. I agree. So what have we been up to? We Like, the craziness has kind of died down from all of the nutty things that happened uh, that we talked about last episode. So, want to tell everybody what we've been up to? I think we've mostly just been finishing out all the rest of the projects, getting a few things done, hanging out, going to uh, fun restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> fun restaurants? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, yeah, we have gone to a fun, a couple of fun restaurants. Uh, we found a speakeasy, which was super cool. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, it's newer, I think, uh, and it's it's behind uh, a restaurant, and so they have full service of the restaurant. And uh, the dog is wanting some attention, so that's I'm I'm petting her. What was I saying? I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, the, the speakeasy. It's behind the restaurant, so there's full service at the restaurant, and then they have all of these really really cool cocktails and so we went there we tried a couple cocktails they were really tasty got some inspiration for our, our own cocktail making here that we do at the house with our camper cocktails uh and it was it was a lot of fun okay so we're gonna jump in this week answering a, 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 a we're, we're gonna answer a fan question that's not a fan question <laughs> What, why? Why are we answering a question that's not a fan question? Because we... Or how, what makes it not a fan question? We get this at campgrounds a, a lot of times when we tell people that we'll f we're full-time RVers. They're like, are you independently wealthy? It is amazing how many people ask us that exact question verbatim. It's, are you independently wealthy? That's the automatic assumption, uh, which is really, really funny. The answer to that is no, we are not independently wealthy. Not even close. We work. That's, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. We work every single day, Monday through Friday. Exactly. So inevitably, the next question that kind of comes up is like, oh, well then, what do you do for a living? So we thought we would answer that here. You want me to go first or you want to go first? Sure, you go first. I will go first. So I work kind of that typical, like, nine to five office gig job uh, knowledge worker and I work remotely I'm on calls like video calls constantly all day long and I primarily use Microsoft Teams to do those calls on a regular basis well I really just kind of do stuff like this essentially <laughs> I edit podcast I edit uh, video uh, social media videos different things like that both for our stuff and for other people I uh, used to do live production and so I now kind of do mostly post-production type work um, and so my schedule is essentially whenever there's a job that I want to do I take it and I do it yeah yeah yours is a little bit more intermittent and your hours are a little bit different because you'll stay up and get a like knock a project out overnight sometimes when you get one whereas mine's kind of more of that typical schedule so how do we work from the road is always the next question people are very very curious about this so we thought we would answer that uh, one of the things that was on our must-have list when we bought our camper we knew we were gonna go full-time we knew we still needed to work full-time we knew we still needed to have a a desk set up of some kind and so we purposefully and intentionally looked for a camper where we could rip out something that was already there and replace it with a sit-stand desk that we already had we we had actually already built it ourselves 
we love our sit stand desk i know that there's newer rvs that are actually being built with office spaces that are in them yeah we purposefully didn't want that because they come with a built-in desk and we wanted to design the space ourselves and so um so that's what we did so the area that we're actually sitting in right now is primarily my desk area but we do swap occasionally especially if he's working on a project where he needs kind of the big monitor then i'll go grab my laptop and either go sit outside and work or i'll sit at the couch and work or something like that um, but one of the things the other things that i love about this area and about our desk setup is it's a sit stand desk so it's got the sit stand legs but the tabletop the desktop is an actual butcher block countertop and it's right here in the kitchen so the kitchen is right next door um, so when we're not working and we're cooking dinner for the night or something like that, it doubles as extra kitchen prep space, which is awesome. Because anytime you're in an RV, especially if you're living full time in an RV, things that are dual purpose are amazing. So that's what we have right now. That's how we work from the road in terms of our kind of typical setup. It makes the commute really, really short, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> short commutes are nice. Yeah, yeah, you just get up from your bed, you walk down here to the desk, uh, I, I get up and I usually come out to the couch and start working on stuff from there. Exactly, and when you need the <laughs> monitor, then we just flip flop. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Awesome, well, one of the other big questions a lot of people wanna hear about is, what is the internet situation out on the road? How is the RV park internet? What hot spots are you using? How much data are you using? That's always a big question nowadays is how, how much data are you using because every hotspot has a limit on it. So we're going to talk a little bit about how the internet is on the road. First of all, it really depends on where you're at. I, I, we've been to several campgrounds and I will say pretty much every campground has their Wi-Fi that they're going to tell you about. And they're going to say, oh yeah, some of them are going to say it's like really, really good. And sometimes they're going to say, oh no, it's it's not good. Don't rely on it. But even the ones who say it's really good, it's not really good enough for the type of work that you do. Because I was, I, I was hoping we were going to get, true. we were going to dive into this. But a lot of what you do on the road, or what you're doing during the workday, is you're on calls, you're on video calls all day long. Yeah. And that consumes a lot of data and a lot of bandwidth. So if you really want to have a reliable internet source that you need to be able to work from, or I need to be able to work from, you kind of basically like need to provide your own internet. Yeah, campground Wi-Fi is not going to hold Not going to cut it. But if I just need to download a couple of project files for me to work on, I can start the download, step away, go work on something else, and then come back, and then that way I'm not consuming as much uh, as much uh, data. So that way yeah. we can kind of use two different internet sources sometimes. Yeah, I think the other thing that's important to note is every time we go somewhere, we specifically target campgrounds that are in locations where we have a much better chance of getting good connectivity, strong connectivity with the internet sources that we provide ourselves. So we don't have to rely on the campground Wi-Fi connections because the campgrounds have varying degrees of quality Wi-Fi connections. And some campgrounds will even tell you, oh yeah, we have a great Wi-Fi connection. And they, it might be great for certain uses, but it's not necessarily going to be good if you are constantly on video calls all day like I am, or you're having to download massive files or things like that. So you just have to keep that in mind um, based on your specific internet use. Right. And so for us, we actually started with a AT&T hotspot and a Verizon hotspot, yeah. and that's all we used. And it, it worked for the most part. Uh, AT&T was very rarely useful. AT&T stopped. Yeah, pretty much. And Verizon was good when it was good, but it, yeah. but when it wasn't good, it was just nothing. And so we ended up about halfway into the year, maybe not even halfway, just like three or four months into the year, we picked up a T-Mobile hotspot. You know, T-Mobile used to be the small fry, you know, no connection anywhere, but they had a bunch of signs about serving, you know, they're spreading out their, their connections. And so we picked up a T-Mobile hotspot and oh my gosh, that's worked everywhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. T-Mobile. I mean, I was very, very surprised by this, but T-Mobile has AT&T and Verizon beat hands down uh, in everywhere that we've been. Now I will say we have not been all the way to the West Coast in recent years. We're actually going that direction this year, so we'll be able to tell you for sure uh, if it works everywhere across the country. But I can guarantee you T-Mobile is better, at least as of the last 12 months, is better about 
the middle of the country and then all the way to the east coast uh and really everywhere in between yeah pretty much i mean we we ended up canceling at t because it just wasn't you know it was just useless we, we had like one spot Actually, this you know this exact spot where we're at right now. We were here last year. It was the only spot that AT&T worked better than Verizon. And now that we've got T-Mobile, it's doing great. So we don't yeah. even need the AT&T. So we canceled that. We took the Verizon hotspot plan down to the bare minimum amount of data, so that that way we could. It's still active, so that way if we do run into a situation where it it's the only option, we can just bump up the amount of data for the month and get what we need. Yeah. Um, but then we also last summer. Finally, we're able to get our hands on Starlink. Yeah, that has been a game changer for us. Yeah, we've, uh, it's literally, you know, sitting right up it's, there. <laughs> it's on, right up there on the roof. <laughs> I mean, that's why we I actually requested a site with no trees, which is eh, not great in Texas. It gets a little warm in here, but it allows us to have clear line of sight and use Starlink for pretty much everything. So between Starlink and T-Mobile, um, we honestly don't have a lot of issues. T-Mobile's been great here. Starlink's great for a backup. We kind of, uh, I'll use one and she'll use the other so that way we're not interfering with each other because there is a little bit of a bandwidth cap uh, on some of it, but at least that way, like, she's able to do her job and if something happens with mine, I can kind of just, again, they'll go back to the old adage of, like, I can just set my computer down, let it download, and go work on a different project. Yeah, I think, I mean, we still have Verizon uh, to a certain degree, but we're kind of considering, we're going to see how it goes getting into some new camping areas and some new places across the country this year, but we're kind of considering even dropping Verizon and just going down to Starlink and a T-Mobile hotspot, because between those and then using campground Wi-Fi when there is a good campground Wi-Fi, between all three of those things, we've really found that we have really, really solid, strong connectivity for the amount of internet use that we use per month. And again, I use a lot. I use, I think we, I think we tested it a couple different months when we first started full-timing and I use like 160, 165 gigs a month. Is that right? I think it was, it was between 150 and 200 on average every month. Which it's is, a lot. It's a lot of data. <laughs> it's a lot. And then on top of that, if we want to, you know, sit down watch a show or do something else, like that data is just gone yeah. just for her job alone and so having other options like T-Mobile and Starlink is a lot better and right now I think we have Verizon set at like 20 gigs like I said it's a bare minimum so that way I can just turn it higher if we ever need to yeah and and I work so I I'm a knowledge worker uh I I'm on calls all day talking to other employees and colleagues and, and folks like that I work for a company that's a global company and so I'm on calls with people across other countries and certainly across the entire U.S all day long. So um, it, that really, really helps and comes in handy to be able to know for sure that I have a solid internet connection every single place we go. Yeah, and Microsoft Teams, which is the video platform that they use, is very inefficient, like annoyingly inefficient about how it handles everything. So that's, you know, I think on Zoom, I calculated, you, you, you I don't know for your exact number of calls, but back when I was having to do that a bunch, like it was maybe 80 gigs over the course of a month, which is not, not even comparable. Yeah. So yeah, and then there's a couple of other options, and they're, they're kind of interesting options. So outside of, you know, your AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, you also have some smaller companies like Visible, Mint, and... I don't know. There's there's a bunch of them out there, and yeah. they, they all kind of have different little promotions and different ways that they kind of try to stand out. Um, Visible's really interesting because Visible is actually a subsidiary of Verizon, which means that you have you get the Verizon network. You, you get m most of the Verizon network. Okay. You're deprioritized, but you get most of the Verizon network. But they have different styles of plans, and so you're deprioritized, so it's it's cheaper, but you can get an unlimited hotspot plan. Now, that unlimited hotspot plan is limited to 5 megabits per second on your bandwidth. So you can use as much data as you want on your hotspot, but you don't, but it's not necessarily going to always be fast enough for everything you do. It might be good enough to watch some TV, but it may not be good enough for a Microsoft Teams call. Yeah. So there are other options out there like that that can really help you out depending on what your use case scenario is. And so we actually had Visible for a little while. We don't have it right now, but if we need to, we can just re, you know, add it back in, get a you know, new SIM card and get up and going. But all you got to do is if you get something like that, you, uh, you take that, plug it into your phone, turn your hotspot on, 
and you can just work unlimited from your computer again at a lower bandwidth yeah and, and it's using Verizon's LTE and 4G and 5G network so it's still good speeds uh, from your phone but it's it's still good and reliable in so far wherever Verizon is reliable there are other companies out there one of them is called mobile must-haves so they're a website they sell hardware and they actually sell service plans so they sell uh, essentially rebranded service plans so in the case of the one we used to have from them we had an 800 gigabyte AT&T plan from them which was really really nice because that beats out a normal hotspot from AT&T but it's deprioritized because it's a reseller and so it was yeah. a little bit slower for us we I, could barely get signal from it yeah but again it, it kind of depends on your use case scenario if all you're doing is checking emails surfing the web things like that it may work perfectly for you Right. And so, the, again, it kind of comes back to the concept of you got to figure out what your needs are and what you want. But there are other options that are cheaper, like Visible is only like 40 bucks a month per device. I, mean, I actually think it's cheaper now. And you have an unlimited hotspot. So as long as you go somewhere that has Verizon, you've got unlimited hotspotting to your computer, yeah. which is great. Um, I think there was somebody in the chat earlier that said Skynet. Are you familiar with that? The Terminator? The Terminator? I mean... It could be really great internet. I don't know. Lordy. <laughs> um, Somebody just, just, you just showed how gullible you are. How do you think, how do you know that I was gullible? <laughs> I just showed what a great actress I am. Uh -huh, there we go. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say. That's kind of the working from the road type, type of life. You got to have internet. You got to have, depending on your use case scenario, you may be watching movies. You may be watching TV shows. You may not be. Maybe you barely do anything from the road. As full-timers, we kind of have the, we work during the day, um, we'll hang out outside in the evenings, and then right before we go to bed, we might watch a show or two before we go to sleep, just kind of wind down mode. Um, you also play video games, too. I do. Yeah. Um, really, none of the internet connections have been reliable enough to, say, play an online game. Like, I tried it a little bit. Uh, I, we weren't always in the best of areas for it, but we tried it a little bit, and I, it was like, okay fine. I won't play online games. I'll just play a bunch of single player games. So you can do it. You just, uh, most games nowadays, updates are constant. And so that's the big thing you have to watch out for is when you need to go update your game. Yeah. Then make sure you have a good internet connection so you can do all of your downloads, all your updates, and then you're good to go after that. Or like I do, I just kind of run things overnight and just kind of let it, just let it go. And like that way. Oh, that's actually smart. I didn't, I didn't realize you did that. Yeah. So that way you know, get up in the morning, everything's done. And that way I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, cool. So I'm going to jump real quickly into our, unless you have something else to say. No, I I really didn't. Like, hopefully that helped. Well, no, maybe actually this might be helpful. So we use a ton of bandwidth uh, and a ton of data, which is why we have Starlink and T-Mobile. I would always recommend at least having two separate internet sources if you're going to full time and you need to constantly be connected like we do. But what about folks who they just check their email? They might check social media or post social media um, posts every now and then, surf the web, watch YouTube videos, things like that. Do you have a different recommendation for maybe some different internet solutions to explore if they're full-timing and doing that? I mean, honestly, if, if that's all you're really doing, I, I mean, so how data with your cell phone gets kind of split out is a lot of times you have unlimited data from your phone, but then maybe uh, when you're hotspotting, you have a limit on your data. So if you're doing a lot of stuff directly from your phone or an iPad or something like that, then you're gonna have you're gonna be able to use that unlimited data from that device. The only time that you're gonna actually have to start worrying about you know marks against you against your data is when you're using the hotspot functionality. So kind of the trick about that is to do as much as you can from your device. You know, get a you know, if you want to watch TV and you don't want to have to use your hotspot, get an adapter so you can plug your phone straight into the TV. That way it's using the data, not an external device. Love it. I think those are the kind of the biggest spectrums. Like ours, 100% is a very, very extreme version of we have to have really solid internet connection all the time. Uh, and that's for our jobs. Um, but we still want to do this RV life. And so we pay extra to have some premium internet sources, but that doesn't mean that every single person needs to depending on your use case scenario. So that's just something to consider. I think it, it would be helpful 
especially if you're thinking about going full-time or even if you're not like say you you just want to go on vacations during the summer you just want to go out on the weekends but you don't want to have to lose your connectivity monitor how much data you use and then use that as your benchmark to figure out how much internet you actually need um, and the other thing to keep in mind is it depends on where you're camping if you constantly go to the same few places every now and then like we have some friends and they they have a, a solid sticks and bricks home and then they have their camper that they use on the weekends and when they go on vacation and they have like two or three main places that they love to go and those are the primary places that they go figure out what the internet source is and what the internet solutions are there what the cellular connections are there and just make sure you have a solution that's going to work in those places so hopefully that helps um, but let's move on to our pick of the week because I think we have a pick of the week that you haven't actually talked about yet that's related. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the hardware that we kind of use and I'm going to talk about two different pieces of equipment. Uh, one is, and I'll link these in our, in the comments section or in the, the description of the podcast, but one of them is a Peplink router, which actually has, mm. um, two SIM card slots. So you can, we originally had an at t and a Verizon in there and that allowed us to use the internet and you can kind of set up priorities based off of devices and what's going on. And so it allows you to kind of manage the internet effectively. Now it's got uh, the Verizon and our, and the T-Mobile and it's wi Wi-Fi hooked up to uh, our Starlink. And so I managed it that way. Uh, but the second device, which is really kind of neat, is the, uh, it's called the Netgear Nighthawk uh, mobile hotspot. It's really useful, I was talking about earlier, with something like visible internet. So again, they give you unlimited hotspot, you know, bandwidth limited down to 5 megabits per second. But uh, if you put your visible SIM card into this device, it allows multiple devices all to connect to that single hotspot and, and you have a dedicated device just for that rather than having to you know have your phone locked down and stuck. And you can put any hotspot in there. You can put uh, Verizon, AT&T, any of them, T-Mobile. Uh, we used it a lot for visible just because it was an unlimited plan and so it was really nice and convenient to just always have this unlimited hotspot available to us that nobody's phone had to be set up for. Somebody asked how much is Starlink. Starlink is... That's actually a really great question. <laughs> it, it's gone up in price, unfortunately, for our viewers. Um, it's all the way up to, I think, $150 now per month. They have a couple different plans, though, right? So they have your their stationary plan, which is like $125 or something like that, $115. I don't remember that is if you have a dedicated home you can set that up you can use it there and then you can do an add-on if you decide to go RVing and you could just add that add-on for a month and then cancel it or so on and so forth and then they have some really expensive ones for like people who go boating or people who want to have Starlink working while they're driving down the road and it gets really expensive and then you can also pay for priority data which if you're in a home, you're probably going to have priority data, but when you're an RVer, all your data is deprioritized, as they like to call it. But it's still usable. It's yeah. still functional. Oh, it's 100% functional. And it depends on where you're at. If you're in a really heavily populated area, it's your deprioritization might become an issue. Um, it, you're over on the East Coast, there's a lot more people over there. You're, you start getting to the middle of the country, there's a lot less people and a lot less deprioritization going on. Yeah. I think the other thing to keep in mind with Starlink as well, whether you're using it stationary in your home or you're traveling with it, is it's just like the old school satellites. It has to have a clear line of sight to the north sky. So if you're in an area, which we've gone to before, where we didn't realize it or we didn't really have a choice because of where we were, we were going and there were a ton of trees, Starlink is not necessarily going to work properly. Um, now, thankfully, in all of those areas that we were in where Starlink didn't work for us and wasn't going to get good signal, T-Mobile was a rock star. Uh, and so we were able to stay connected that way. But that is something to consider, which, again, goes back to my point of have two connections if you're full-timing and you're traveling. Hey, friends. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'd love to stay connected. So we are on all the social medias. Follow us on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we're on Snapchat as well now. Um, or if you want to connect with us, uh, we have a website now. So it's beacons.ai slash wandering RV babe. It's B E A C O N S dot AI uh, slash wandering RV babe. Or it's linked in the bio of all of our social media pages, which you can get to by searching for wandering RV babe. Um, so yeah, we'd love to connect with you, get some travel ideas, get tips 
uh, tricks. We'd love to hear comments and suggestions, things like that. So connect with us and we will see you next time. We are rainmakers, just so you know. <laughs> Does anybody know about any drought place, like places that are in a drought? Because I guarantee you, we can come and bring the rain. All year this year, the rain has just followed us. Everywhere we've gone, in fact, places that are in drought right now, we're getting right where we're at. We're in West Texas. They're constantly in a drought. They're always in a drought. They're in the freaking desert. And it's Since, been raining. Yeah, it rained on us coming in. We've been here for uh, maybe two, like right about two weeks. And it's rained almost every single day, usually overnight, which is nice because it's nice during the day. But it's rained every single day. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you know of any spots that are in a drought right now and need some rain, you let us know and we'll come travel to your area. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>